so look at this. It's a yo-yo. Originally, it was a weapon, really. Um, let me just take hold the string and let go. Okay, and so it, it rolls down. Um, but let's assume that we have a yo-yo that's a disc, okay, and the strings wrap around the outside, and it's not, it's tight, so at the bottom it would have to, it would have to stop, okay, when it got to the string. But let's say that before it gets to quite to the bottom, um, let's see what we can find out, in particular, maybe the tension in the string as it falls a distance h, okay. So, let's draw a picture. Here's... Here's my yo-yo, and then I'm going to let it roll down a distance h. Okay, and let's just say, um, you know, what's the tension in the string? Okay. Um, okay, so clearly we have to use the work energy system here, work energy principle, because we're dealing with distances. So, what's, in this case, we have two choices. We can do... Uh, the point system, the point particle system, or the real. And remember, in the point particle system, we treat this yo-yo as just one point. And then when we do that, we look at all the forces acting on that point, as though they were acting on the center mass. In the real system, we use real forces, and they're real displacements. And so a point particle system can have just translational kinetic energy. If it's a point, it doesn't even spin, it can't have thermal energy or anything. The real system can have um, rotational energy, thermal energy, all sorts of energy. In this case, the real system can have both translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. So, I'm going to start with the real system first. So, in the real system, the system is my yo-yo. Yo-yo. Uh, so, what work is done on the yo-yo? The work is going to be done, let's draw a free body diagram. Here's my uh, gravitational force, mg, and then I have tension right there. Do you think those two forces are the same? They're not. They can't be. Just think, back to the point system, if I have tension and, and gravity is the same, then it wouldn't, the center mass wouldn't change its motion, and it does, speeds up as it falls. So, mg does work, right, and it moves the distance h, and it's in the same direction that it's moving, so the work done by gravity is mgh. What's the work done by the tension? Well, the tension doesn't move, so it doesn't do any work on the real system, okay? So, and I, I'm just, I'm not moving the top part, it's just, dropping from rest. Okay, so that's it. Now what kind of energy can I have? I can have translational kinetic and I can have rotational kinetic energy where kinetic translational is one half m v center mass squared and rotational is one half i omega squared where i is the moment of inertia, omega is the uh, angular velocity about the center mass. Okay, so if I start, let's call this point 1 and this point 2, then I could say work equals mgh, that's an h. Uh, changing translational kinetics is going to be final minus initial, so it's going to be uh, k2 minus initial, which is 0, plus the final rotational. Let me just go ahead and put in the values for these. 1 half mv2 squared minus 0 plus one-half I omega-2 squared minus zero. That's my change. Okay, now I know some things about disks. First, I know that for a disk, I equals uh, one-half m r squared, where m is the mass of the disk and r is the radius of the disk. Also, I know that if this string is stationary, and this is moving and kind of unwinding at the same time without slipping, then V to, or V at any point, is going to be uh, R omega. That has to be true. If you roll something and it doesn't slide, then there's a relationship between the center mass and the angular speed, just like that. 
Okay, so if I put those in, I, down here I get um, work is MGH one half M V two squared, and then this term is going to be plus one half times one half M R squared times omega two is going to be V two over R. So it's going to be V two squared over R squared. So these cancel, and I get one fourth m v squared plus one half. I get m g h equals three fourths m v two squared, and the mass is canceled. So I, I can solve for the velocity at the bottom, and I get v two equals the square root of four thirds g. H. Now, how does that compare to just dropping an object? If I just drop an object, it wouldn't have this term. And so you'd get, if you solve this, you'd get square root of 2 GH. So is this going to be faster or slower than that? 2 is greater than 4 thirds. So this is going to be slower. Which makes sense. The string's doing something. It's making it not go so fast. Okay. So let me put this up here because it's important. V2 equals the square root of 4 thirds GH. And YouTube gives me a 15 minute window, so I have to make this less than 15 minutes. And I can do that. Hopefully. I have no idea how long this is taking right now. Okay, so now going to the, to the point particle system. So now, work equals change in kinetic. And what does work on this? Well, in this case, I have two things doing work. I have um, the work done by gravity is going to be mgh plus the work done by tension minus th. Because the tension is pulling up. So, it's going to, so the angle between the tension and the displacement is 180 degrees. So that's going to give me a negative work. And this is going to be uh, k2 minus the initial of zero. Okay, well you see where I'm going here. Um, I already know the final kinetic energy. I, it's the same as what it was before. So I have mgh minus th equals the final kinetic energy of, it was 4 thirds m, let's see, wait. It was 4 thirds, let's see. K, let me just write it down. K2 equals 1 half m v2 squared. So it's going to be 1 half m. That squared is going to be 4 thirds gh. That doesn't seem right, but I'll continue anyway. So it's going to be uh, 2 thirds mgh. 2 thirds mgh. Um, so now I want to solve for t. I'm going to add TH to both sides, and then I'm going to get MGH equals two-thirds MGH plus TH. Subtract two-thirds MGH from both sides, and I get uh, MGH minus two-thirds MGH is one-third MGH. And that's going to be equal to TH divided both sides by H. T equals one third mg. Now that might actually be wrong. I think I might have missed a half sign somewhere. Um, but I'm not going to remake the video because I'm that lazy. Uh, but you see the idea. Uh, maybe you can find the error if there is an error and fix it, and that will be good for you. Um, but does this make sense? Well, this can't be bigger than the gravitational force, or it would speed up going up, and it doesn't do that. Um, it is smaller, and it has the right units. So I think it's at least close. If this was a test question, even if I got that wrong, I would get most of the credit correct. So. Um, but also you see that it doesn't depend on how far it's falling, so it's a constant tension, assuming the, string, the mass of the string is negligible. Um, but. Okay.